We live on an ocean planet. The high seas make up for half of its surface. However, this last frontier, to our knowledge, is under threat. And we lack an effective governance system to protect it. the Third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea is called to order. I hope the conference will succeed in adopting a convention whose importance I do not need to stress uh, again. In 1982, the international community adopted uh, a new convention on the Law of the Sea, which is recognized as uh, the Constitution for the Ocean. It modified the entire legal system introducing new maritime areas, and this changed the whole game. The convention, which took effect in 1994, subdivides the ocean into zones and regulates all human activities that take place within them. Each coastal state enjoys an exclusive economic zone, or EEZ, that extends up to 200 nautical miles from the coast. Within these boundaries, states are responsible for economic activities the preservation of the environment and the sustainable use of resources. However, beyond the limits of an EEZ, on the high seas, there are still no legal tools to protect biodiversity. We must understand that everything in the ocean is connected. What happens in the high seas will affect exclusive economic zones and coastal regions that are in proximity. If high seas ecosystems are endangered because of a lack of governance, this can result in lack of resources for neighboring countries. So understanding and managing the high seas becomes crucial for the food security and stability of developing countries. In this context, uh, the scientific community has a role to play. All political or legal uh, decisions, um, like whether or not protect an area, need to be based on scientific information uh, that supports this decision. And it's IUCN role to bridge science to policy, to make sure that states have the right information in order to take the right decisions. This is why the French Facility for Global Environment, in partnership with IUCN, launched an expedition to the Walters Shoal, an isolated cement in the Indian Ocean. So Walter Shoal is a unique structure in the fact that it's really in the high seas. 700 kilometers from the continental shelf of Madagascar, 1,000 kilometers from the continental shelf of South Africa. So this makes it a very singular object. We brought back a wealth of new results. The conclusion is that Walter Shoal is unique from a geographical point of view and it's unique biologically. What you find on Walter Shoal is not replaceable by another seamount anywhere. It's Walter Shoal and nowhere else. We live in an age of environmental anxiety. Exploring a place like Water Shoal is full of optimism. It's full because it's full of discovery. I find myself in the same situation as the oceanographers of the end of the 19th century. We go to places where people have hardly been to and we discover things that we did not know exist on the planet. We still have the planet to explore and of course to be, to be taken care of. Humanity understands the value of the ocean. What is needed now is to be organized as well as the climate community is organized. We need an ocean community to act at a global scale with global and common objectives. Everything is in place, but we are still lacking the possibility for a true coordination on biodiversity. Everything has been settled sector by sector. 
fisheries, navigation, maritime affairs, seabed mining, but nobody has been able to settle something which is really about biodiversity conservation in the high seas. What is at stake here is to add a new chapter to the Constitution because some points, some issues have been neglected in the past by the Constitution. And the United Nations understood the need of enri enriching the Convention. They decided to have this year and the following years an intergovernmental conference in order to fill the gap, to add a new chapter to the Constitution for the Ocean. It's, everything is in place. All the stakeholders are there. So what is needed is just go ahead with that. Now, more than ever, the issue of high seas governance and the protection of biodiversity is bound to the future of life on our planet. There is still time to save the ocean for the well-being of all humankind.